Happy Pride Month 2023! Better late than pregnant, I always say. This is a very asshole-centric Pride episode. Literally and figuratively. Like, we talk about an influencer who wants everyone to bottom better. And then I rave about how much I love my new bidet. Hey! And we talk about some real transphobic buttholes in the news. And then, oh my god, we quickly celebrate the death of one of the biggest assholes the queer community has ever had to contend with. So, take a few deep breaths, because we are going in, honey. Welcome to Pitney and Amelia's Bitchin' Boutique. We may be awful, but But we're we're right. Oh my god, Pitney, I love how you're growing out your little beard. It's so cute. Yes, I just, I'm freshly dyed. And it's like you're growing your, your, your chin beard, ex- like, long. Like, not, not old prospector or anything. You're not, you're not, uh, Rip Van Winkle or anything. But it's a little longer than it was. It's cute. Yeah, but, you know, I always clip it. Before I die. Right. Before I die it, not before I die. Well, yes. Clip <laughs> it before you die. Yes. Um, before you color. But I decided that I was just, I was like, I, I, I was liking it. Because I just let it grow for Kerrville and everything. Yeah. Because it's so, you know, dirty and hippie out there. It's like, right. well, I can just grow it. Um. But no, I really like it, so I think I'm going to let it grow for a little bit, and I'm going to see what happens. And you know, when it's longer, you know, you get a little more, you know, it's a little more stuff for putting glitter in, or for putting a little paint. That's true, and I did do my beard painting this year, so, you know. Well, that's good. (laughs) And you know those little itty-bitty clips, like for, like, little girl's hair, the little the little clippies that are kind of glittery and little oh, butterflies. Yes. I know exactly what you're talking you about. You can <laughs> totally get those itty bitty <laughs> clips and and like, you know, just put like little butterflies and things into your into your beard. Yes, as it grows. But yeah, I'm like my mom's horrified. Well, you know. She's like, Oh Pitney, aren't you gonna cut that? Oh, I think not. <laughs> Yeah, she doesn't like it. And I said, no, I'm going to let it grow. She's like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it doesn't, you know, whatever. I mean, she doesn't really care. She'll let me do whatever, but yeah. And and our, you should just say, well, you know, if you think this is long, you should see my pubes. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's all trimmed down there. <laughs> oh. well, you're, what, you're not, that's you're not, you're not cornrowing your pubes? And put little braids on it, little little braids and little beads on the end, yeah. so they can go clackety clack. Yeah, I did trim that for Kerrville because you never knew what was going to happen. Oh my! Of course, nobody saw it, but you know, <laughs> I was prepared. Well, you to know, see you don't. <laughs> I mean, so you know, it. Well, it does make it easier to like check for ticks and whatever when you're out there. Uh, well, yes. Oh God. You know, ticks and lies. Yes. You know? How was the weather? It was good. It I apparently dodged a bullet because I've been seeing the weather now. I mean, I'm two weeks home now. Oh, yeah. But even last week, I noticed it was much hotter. It was great out there. It was oh, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we've been promised a lot of rain that we're 60s, not getting. Yeah. Yeah, we've, uh, we've, been, we've had a lot of forecast of rain that we ain't getting. Now, a couple nights ago... Um, the radar was showing that it was raining, even storming at my house, and it was not raining anywhere near here. Now, the other side of town was having hail, but we weren't having shit. Now, right now, the heat index at my house, at this moment, 113 degrees. So, what the fuck? And I can only imagine, by the time y'all are listening... Uh, It will be, you know, June 30th, and I can only imagine how fucking hot it will be by then. 
Yeah, you know, uh, Trisha is at the beach in Rockport right now with her husband. Oh, well, God, it's going to be so disgusting down there. And, yeah, she texted me, and she's like, oh, my God, it's so horrible. The heat index is, like, 112. And it's, and like, just, just steamy and mosquitoes and swampy. It's so yeah, nasty Yeah, and they're down just there. hiding in the hotel room and then going to the beach at night at, like, midnight. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. Oh, it's so, yeah. Well, Texas beaches are not nice. I mean, they really, they're not... Yeah, I know they're not. <laughs> you know, it's more of a But the cool thing about Rockport shoreline. is it's like some sort of like, I don't know, estuary or something that's separate from the main. So it's like, you know, sort of like across from Corpus. So oh, like yeah. if you go to Corpus, you get all the waves. Right. Like normal. But the beach in Rockport, there's no waves. It's just calm. And right. you can walk out 100 feet and only be navel deep. So that's perfect for them to go at night. Sure, but it's also, you know, more swampy-ish. And, oh, believe yeah. me, I know. I know. It's, you know, it's even less of a beach. Yeah, cause I, but I had gone with them, like, right before I moved here. I remember I went there with them. And I remember um, smoking a joint and going in the water at, like, midnight with her husband. And we had a really good time. <laughs> Oh, God. Because it was safe, you can't go into the ocean at midnight. It's not safe. You die because you can't see what's going on, right? But at Rockport, it's fine because there ain't no waves, you know. Well, aren't there like so? There's no. You don't have to worry about like like critters. You don't have to worry about. No, like, there was nothing. Mm -mm. There's nothing in the water or in the sand that you have to worry about stepping not on. That not that we encounter shallow I mean, water knows, is but... where you know my mother now granted you know the beach the the florida side is prettier but you know watch walking al along the edge of the water is just as bad as walking in shallow water and that's my mother you know stepped on a stingray and the stinger went right up through her foot Ooh. now i did get stung by a jellyfish in guatemala but yeah, totally well, different a ocean. Very oh, different situation. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, but anyway, but, yeah. So yes. I'm glad that I was in Texas when I was because I dodged the. Heat. Oh my god. But you know, my mentioning of uh, how hot it's going to be by the time this comes out, I do. You know, I do feel the need to apologize to the listeners for how late our Pride episode is this year. You know, I this everything about this year. As, like, May and June, just everything was, like, upside down and weird because mm -hmm. Frightmare not being at the beginning of May, being at the end of May, it just made everything not mentally make sense. And it was yeah, really yeah. hard to sort of, all of a sudden it was, wait, it's June? How is it June already? And suddenly it was like, oh, fuck. You know, the, you know the, the, that the Frightmare episode came out at like the beginning the beginning of June. That's not normal. And then yeah. suddenly it was, well, I guess this is going to be the Pride episode then. Oh yeah. shit. Well, we managed to get the Pride episode into June it's by in a hair. June. It's in the right month. But shit, yeah. by the time some of you are li actually listening to it, it it'll be July. We're sorry. But, you know, there's a lot I've been, you know, spending the the weeks leading up to it. I've been kind of pushing all of our old you know, our old, our past Pride episodes, our past, yeah, our past, uh, queer ass episodes, you know, like the, the ones where we talked about, about the gender non-binary and the one we talked about, oh, yeah. you know, all the, the various fabulous Steve episodes and, you know, things like that. So we've had, we've had quite a few just insanely queer ass episodes. So, you know, hopefully yeah. some of y'all have been enjoying those. So. But there was a lot of quite somehow, you know, for for those people who don't, once again, for those people who do not follow us on social media, shame on you. And you really should be out there following us. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go, go to our website and go to the categories and go to the LGD, LGBTQ category and mm. sort and go through all of them because there's so much good shit out there. Yep. You know, 
sto- stories about you know like you you guys being backstage at a big fundraiser in San Francisco and you know meeting Jerry Herman and oh god fucking yes. Carol Channing and <laughs> yes. it's like what the fuck and Lauren Bacall. and Lauren Bacall I got to meet Lauren Bacall yeah and me just going what 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know fabulous anyway. Pride Month, y'all. So, you know, we'll we'll get to some political shit later, but we have some, you know, gay-ass shit we want to talk about. Speaking of gay-ass. Yes. Super fan and friend of the show, Angie, alerted us to... Well, well, it started off as just, oh my god, check out this guy's Instagram page. And I took one look at it and said, well, you know... I have to get Pitney's opinion on this. And then I decided that I really didn't need to look at it too much because Pitney needed to explain some shit to me. And uh, um, I'm just going to let him kind of run with it, and I'm just going to scream and laugh mostly. So how would you uh, describe, yeah. what the fuck is this guy's deal? Okay, so the page. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. It's the bottoms digest Ugh. so if you you know if anybody that wants to look at his webpage it's the bottoms digest.com yeah just like a reader's digest but the bottoms and digest, he has right? all the social media so you can you can find him on he has a youtube channel he has instagram he has everything and he he thinks being a bottom is a personality. Like, he thinks... Yeah, I just find it really, really ho- amusing, but horrifying, too. Uh, um, I mean, I understand being a slut. I'm all about being a I slut. I mean, oh, yes. Because at first, that's what I thought it was going to be. But then I realized, like, oh, my God, this, this guy is, like, 24-7 ass in the air. Yeah. All his whole website is recipes, so it's easier to bottom. So yeah. apparently, he just eats all his meals so you can be a better bottom, so there's no choice of messiness happening. Right, like every minute of every um, day is well. I'm I'm probably gonna get rammed up, rammed up the can later, so I need to make sure. Yeah. That when I eat breakfast this morning, I'm going to be ready for, like, yeah, later this afternoon. Recipes for it. And he has a link. Favorite douche. Uh, yeah, favorite douche. Favorite lube. Favorite travel lube. Like, hello. How is that different? Hello. Well, um, it has to fit in. It has to fit in your fanny pack. As as he said in this one uh, video that I watched of his on his YouTube channel that was about getting ready for Pride and what to fit what to put in your fanny pack or as he calls it your fanny if it doesn't fit in your fanny it's too big and he thinks he's so funny <laughs> and it's just like I mean I know I mean I've been you know to many many prides and yes yes there is you know the hooking up. There's the hooking up, and I've had my share of, you know, anonymous sex in bar bathrooms during Pride. Well, I should hope so. It totally happens, and it's fabulous, and it should happen, right? It should, because we're not, you know, we're not Christian traditional values people. We are sexual beings, and that if that's okay for that to happen. Yes. That you make that your whole life. Is a little weird to me. Yeah, and I, I as a, as a chick lady person, I mean, I certainly, although I have a good imagination, I do not claim to know everything about what dudes do. But I, but I'm smart enough to figure stuff out. But even I, like, I can only equate, like, I try to imagine this as, like, what like the the equivalent for me would be if i was just obsessed with my snooch to the point where 
I have to be snooch ready. Like, I have to be Yeah, like, that's all you think about. Like, yes, yeah. like, I have to be, like, lubed and ready at all times. What can I do? What can I do? You know, and also, you know, I have to make sure that I'm never gassy. I'm never... Because... You know, if your stomach's a little too full, if you're a little too hungry, if you're a little too full, if you're a little too anything, it's just like, oh, I I have to be in the mood and and ready to go at all times. Because if there's a hard dick, I need to jump on it. Uh, Apparently that's And this seems to be, this seems to be the way this guy is. And it's like, that's, because now, I'm I'm just going to say this and I'm sure that that someone's tender sensibilities might be offended and too bad for you. I mean, unless there is literally a bullet in the chamber at Hmm. that moment, I would think that things are pretty much good to go for a bottom. That unless, you know... Because basic anatomy, there's a sphincter at either end of the rectum, and there is not always poop between those two sphincters. The colon is separate, and as long as that little area is not occupied otherwise, you should be able to do whatever the hell you want. Like, douching should not have to happen. Before you have uh, yeah, sex. Yeah, I think that's weird. Because it's like, I have been, you know, sexually active for, what, 40 years. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, 90% of the time that is not an issue. Yeah. And if you're and into if, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, and I just don't understand. I, yeah, I don't understand this guy's fetishization of being a bottom. It's almost unhealthy to me. <laughs> you know? It's almost it's almost to the point where he thinks that his asshole is such an offensive, awful thing that he needs to sterilize it and turn it into something else so that a guy will want to fuck it. Because he, he's yeah, it's almost but... like he's turning it into something. He, it's like he's turning it into a pocket pussy. It's like he's turning it into something that is not a human. Oh, yes. He's no longer a human asshole. Yeah, he's like it's like the human fleshlight. Yes, <laughs> it's like he's he's cleaning it to the point where it it fails to be a human body part anymore. Yeah, it's so fucking weird. Ugh. And I don't even understand like that. That dedication to be a bottom. I, am, I mean, what a weird fucking identity. Like, I mean, there are pick me girls. There are people who are just so determined to be like popular, and yeah. you know, they just really want to be super. You know, they just want to be the most popular. You know, the bell of the goddamn ball. I yeah. understand that, but. This is another level. And this is, I mean, this is an influ. I'm making bunny ears. I'm making quotes. This yeah. is an influencer, but he's, a, he's an, an asshole influencer. Yeah, and I'm looking, you know, on his website right now. And I mean, not I'm not in detail, but because I've read and looked at all of it before. But it's like. You would think there was some sort of, like, humor in it, but it's really not meant to be, um, catty. It's totally real. Right! That was the thing that really struck me. It's totally real. It's not campy. It's totally real. I, that, that was the thing that struck me (laughs) at first, was that I was thinking that, oh, he's gonna be doing this with a wink. He's gonna be doing this... Like, oh, isn't this funny? Let's let's all you know because you know sex is funny. We're, assholes are funny. Let's just you know, 
Like, I'm going to be giving this educational information for people who want it, but I'm going to do it in a funny way and whatever. But the thing is, he's not educational for like a young person. But he's... Who's just coming out. But yeah, he's like dead serious. But that's the problem, is that the only people who are going to be looking to him for education are young people who don't know what they're doing. And those people are going to find him and think, oh God, I need to take my asshole maintenance really seriously. Because he's not being funny about it. And he's, he, because he's so goddamn serious that th- this guy is going to give people a complex. Uh, right. I he's know. not, <laughs> he's not being cute about it. He's being ridiculous. And it's only funny if you're laughing at him. Because yeah. he doesn't, he's not smart enough. To be like, look, it's not healthy to be this 24-7, 365. Because there is such a thing as beyond the point. Oh, yeah. I mean, this guy, this is, it's frightening. I can only, I mean, this, this guy is like, I can only imagine... What yeah, is... and I mean, there's, you know, sex positivity, and then there's just, you need to go to therapy because there's more to life than sex. You know what I mean? Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> like, like, does this guy have actual friends? Like, what, does this guy like movies? Does he like TV shows? Does he ever, can he hold a conversation about any other topic except his rectum? Yeah. I mean, my God. No, and I've I've met people like that. Like, all they talk about is cock. And that's all they care about. That's all they think about. I've met people like that. And it's really kind of unfortunate. Oh, my God. (laughs) So, oh, my God. If there's any, if there's any young, you know, because we, we certainly hope even though our show is not really intended for young people, but if there's young people, hi, you have very good taste. Um, If you want to get some, you know, information about how to, you know, asshole maintenance. Be a big old whore. Be a big old whore. Be a big old whore. (laughs) You know, that would be the guy. That would be the, the site to go to. But remember... Your Uncle Pitney and Auntie Amelia keep keep our voices in your head at all times. And remember that you should not, it shouldn't be a lifestyle. That being a bottom is not a personality. Yeah. That it's just, it's really not a thing. Any more than being a top should be a personality. Oh, it's so stupid. It's just repulsive it's just you know be be a well-rounded person yeah you know my god because yeah, you were you are not your sexual proclivity you are so you know? much more you are so much more than your asshole yeah <laughs> i yes. think i think we've all learned something here today Speaking of other people's assholes, let's talk about my asshole. Uh-huh. Because okay. it's been oh, a yeah. few months since we've talked about my asshole. Yeah. <laughs> and really, isn't that what everyone wants to hear about? Because, oh, you know. Because a, um, <laughs> a, sometime like, like last year, uh, we did an episode where we talked about like the $40,000 toilet. The forty thousand dollar Japanese toilet and whatever, and and we talked about like the glamour of you know the bidet, uh-huh. and I am not sure if I announced it on the show, but I think if I didn't, then it's definitely a good time for me to mention. I got a bidet. See how glamour because. Because my asshole deserves it, and <laughs> I hear I hear your dog just sneezed. 
Yes, he did. Bless you, Jock, sir. <laughs> I bought a Tushy brand bidet. And I went ahead and got a new toilet seat while I was at it, because why the hell not? And because as long as I had to take the toilet seat off to to attach the bidet to it, it's like, let's just go ahead and get a new toilet seat while we're at it. And the Tushy bidets come in, there's all kinds of different ones. I didn't get the super fancy. Uh, there is one that um, you can get one that you can have warm water. Um, but that you have to connect a, a tube to the warm, to like the sink, like oh, underneath. Yeah, and we would have yeah, to drill. Yeah. And I don't really, ha- I, I was like, you know what? Cold water's fine. And I will say yeah. the first time I used it, and found out how cold that water was, it was like, oh, that's refreshing. And I will say, like I just said, that the heat index is 113. Man, you know, summertime, summertime in Texas, that is some, that's some damn refreshing. That's, that's, uh, a, that's a damn refreshing little spray of water right there. But I got to say, man, it's, it's an excellent, excellent investment. And... Uh. That's fabulous. It's, I I love it, but I but one of the reasons why I brought it up, and this is by the way the thing that is that is most bitchin' for me, and I I, okay. I could have brought it up many weeks ago, but yeah. so many other things were going on. But right now, this is the thing that's bitchin' that I want to talk about. But what a thing that came with uh, my tushy, my tushy brand bidet, uh-huh. <laughs> and. Y'all can all look at hellotushy.com, which is their website. Uh, a, a little booklet that is titled This Number Two Shall Pass, which came with oh. my that came with my tushy bidet, and it is filled with keep me for bathroom reading or re- reduce d- deuce your uh. waste by sharing me with all the booties, rumps, and buns you love and. Uh, how to brag about tushy, tushy with your friends. It, uh, they have a section on analyzing your poop with the Bristol stool chart. Um, oh, how fabulous. Bidet myths debunked. <laughs> astrology. And some other things about their other, um, the travel tushy, the tushy ottoman, the tushy toilet brush. You can, you can like, re, you can like totally redo your bathroom with tushy products. It's very cute. Oh my God. You should scan that to PDF and put it up on on the, the, our website for oh people my God. to download. <laughs> it's so cute. But I, I did want to talk about uh, the Bristol stool chart, which you can which you can look up online. The Bristol stool chart is everywhere. But Oh, yeah. Um, because there's seven different uh, types of poop, and it's a way to... You want to fall, you know, somewhere in the middle. You know, somewhere, bet- somewhere around sausage or snake. But my favorite yeah. thing, because milk duds uh, is like... Is like really hard little balls, and then you have a bunch of grapes, which is like milk does <laughs> softer milk does that are stuck together. So much chocolate, can't stop eating chocolate. Chocolate feels good. That, I'm reading. I'm reading from the book. Uh, Sausage, which is normal. Well balanced. Well balanced diet. Brag about it. Snake. Clean eating equals clean pooping. Uh, and then type number five: chicken McNuggets. Maybe add a side of broccoli to your order of double loaded bacon nacho tots. Uh, ah. Type number six, oatmeal, signifies mild diarrhea. One too many cheesy gordita crunch wrap supreme pizza roll ups. And type ah. number seven, gravy. <laughs> you oh you God. drank the water in Cabo, didn't you? I find it amusing and helpful, but also kind of horrifying. It's so, but it's so useful. Everyone understands it. Yeah, it's yeah. so, it's so great. But I got, I just gotta say, I, you know, it's the great, it's the greatest thing in the world. And I know that as long as you share that one bathroom with your mother, I don't think, I don't think a bidet is going to be in your future. But I think, I think you would love it. Oh yeah, no. I think you would love it. Should I, should I just mail a copy of this book to you? Oh, so I think it's fabulous. So you can have yes, it in the bathroom yes. and your mother could read it? 
And she would just be, oh, Pitney. Yeah, I do not see that happening. I can see her being very traumatized by the mere mention of the. <gasps> I sh- should I send it? Should, should it be her Christmas present if I just sent her a, a bidet? Ooh, I could send her a travel bidet. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Maybe I could send her a wiping stick. I don't know. She just wouldn't even know. <laughs> Pitney, But what it is would be this? glamorous. It would be glamorous. But I want it. He- I want it heated. I want warm water. Well, then you're gonna have to drill a hole and and run a pipe through the to the to the sink. I want warm water and pink foam. <laughs> well, that's a you're gonna have to pink pink foam like the old moose like the old uh, yeah. hair hair moose. Oh, remember remember the old hair moose when when moose was new, and they used there was a brand that would be like chocolate mousse for it was hair mousse but it was like a chocolate scented mousse that was brown and a vanilla scented hair mousse and a strawberry oh, scented hair no. mousse and it was like why would you do that and the chocolate scented hair mousse smelled really good but it was like why would you be putting that in your hair that's really weird yeah. because mousse was a new no, idea i don't remember that at all but i'm delighted by it <laughs> oh, I wonder if there's still cans of it, like, sitting around that you could, like, buy on eBay. Oh, my God. Yeah, because I was going to oh, suggest maybe. that strawberry mousse. You could just put that right on your asshole. Yeah. <laughs> but if you spray pink foam, that's just more stuff to rinse off. You just want oh, well, water. That's true. Trust me, you just want water. That's true. But does it actually clean? God damn me, right. Would have to... Okay. Because to me, it would have to be at least 10 minutes of water pressure to make things clean. No, no, because you're not giving it a chance to, like, smear around or dry oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. on you. It, ca- oh, it just yeah, yeah. came out, and you're rinsing it off immediately. Yeah. It's amazing. And, <laughs> I, I, and I, although, okay, okay, look. Not to be gross, but there have been times when sometimes um, the angle surprises me, and uh-huh. let's just say I, I I I wasn't intending to give myself an enema. Sometimes the water comes on a little too hard, and I didn't realize the back door was open. I didn't realize I was uh-huh. I didn't realize I was so relaxed, <laughs> and that is some cold water. And all of a sudden, it's just like. It's just like, all right, I'm going to turn this thing on. And it's like, oh, what the hell? Oh, my goodness. Okay, hang on. Yeah. that's See, that's extra cleansing. That's good. Uh, it's a little uncomfortable because that water is cold. Yeah, but see, I want warm water. And every time it goes on, I want it to play Some Sunday Morning by Wayne Newton. <laughs> does, does, that, does that help your bowels relax? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand the connection. That's a separate button. You're, that's a that's the that's an ultra deluxe model. The Wayne Newton button. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Anyway, so what's bitching with you? <laughs> Apart from some Sunday morning by Wayne Newton. Okay, some Sunday morning by Wayne what's Newton. What's bitching? Um, I have been. Utterly obsessed with Chicago PD this week. I've never watched it. I've, you know, I used to watch it, and I kind of forgot about it. Um, Are there, like, hot guys on it or something? What made you start watching it? Oh, yeah, yeah, but I just, you know, uh, but I started, I was just channel flipping, and I couldn't find anything, and I was just like, oh, I was going through Peacock. And I was like, oh, Chicago PD, I used to like that. I'm going to turn this on. So I started watching it. Totally ended up binge watching the first 10 episodes of season 10. And that's all I've been doing. I have not even been playing Diablo 4, which I just paid $70 for. I've played it 30 minutes. And that's all I've played it because I've been so obsessed with watching Chicago PD on Peacock. Oh. Um, yeah, so I'm, I used to be really obsessed with John Cena. 
Oh, yes. I thought you Who's would... not on it anymore, but now there's a new guy on it that, that is very dreamy. So I've oh. been watching him. And his name is, you know, Benjamin. Because I can't even remember. You know, some two last name, Hispanic last name that I can't remember. But he's he's pretty dreamy. He plays Officer Torres. Okay, I'm I'm looking. I'm looking. And you know, he's totally shaved head, tattoos, totally my type. <laughs> So that's what's bitching with Benjamin me. Benjamin Levy Aguilar? Yes. Oh, yeah, I can see how he would be your type. Yeah, so that is bitch, bitching with me is Chicago PD season 10. <laughs> ah. Oh, yeah, he's absolutely your type. Jeez. Oh, he's yes. from Guatemala. Yes. Oh. Oh, he's and cute. I need to start playing Diablo 4, hello, because I paid 70 fucking dollars for that game, and I need to start playing it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh my god. Maybe tonight. We'll Maybe see. tonight. Are you weird? Do you like spooky? Do your references always get a side eye from your parents, siblings, and best friends? Welcome home. Welcome home to the international podcast sensation Spine Chillers and Serial Killers. A show where three friends, Bex, Tash, and Evan, talk about true crime and the paranormal. But that's... that's not all. There's also laughter, randomly singing, and a slight struggle to pronounce words because... well... Words are hard. So come join us for spooky, murdery stuff and a little bit of subject wandering while we're at it. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome Welcome to Spine Spine Chillers Chillers and and Serial Killers. Killers. All right, so now we're going to get into political current events kind of shit. Ah, oh, Lord. Yes. And there's so much. There's so much. There's so much. But we right. we had to, you know, we had to kind of plan. We had to figure it out. We've been talking for a while. Like, what are we going to do? What are we going to talk about? What are we going to do? And we decided we would pick certain, like, instead of talking about big, overarching stuff. Because everyone, oh, my God, there's so much. There's so much. There's everything is so crazy. So we were going to pick certain individual like stories that we were going to talk about that would be like certain things that were that yeah, were particularly yeah. screaming out at us and we would each pick something. Yeah. And um so we flipped a coin and I go first. So okay. by the time I forget, I forget already what day this happened, but by the time this comes out, it will have been weeks. Weeks have, will have gone by. So on the day that there was a big pride celebration at the White House, which that in and of itself is so fucking cool. Oh, and yeah, I know. I was so... Like, I didn't even know it was going to happen until it had all, it had just happened. And so what, what I first saw was just sort of like a montage of just like all these little kind of clips and images and stuff. And so the thing that I'm going to bring up uh, was I first saw it just sort of as part of a bunch of images. And when I saw it, it made me very happy and I just thought it was wonderful. And at first I didn't think, Oh, that's going to piss off people. That's going to make people Mm -hmm. upset. I mean, if it had been separate and I'd seen it on its own, I might've thought that even though it shouldn't have made anyone upset. And, and of course, you know, things, things make people upset for no goddamn reason. So what the, the, the thing that, I'm going to bring up is um, 
a trans woman, a trans woman activist named Rose Montoya for like less than a minute, probably less than 20 seconds, Mm -hmm. uh, got her tits out. And my God, you would have thought she stabbed someone. So the context of it was that she, she, and she, yes, she was there. She was invited. Like there was a bunch of people who were there who were specifically invited. Mm -hmm. And she had spoken at an event earlier that day. That was all part of this whole celebration. She was not just some rando who was there. But she was very honored to be there. She was very happy. And she was there with a bunch of trans people. And in that moment, um, she was standing with some trans men who, in just a moment of, they were all feeling so great and happy and joyful and loved and safe, you know, and, and kind of, And being, like, on the lawn of the White House and feeling extremely proud and safe and happy. And these men decided to take their shirts off and proudly sort of display their male chests with their top surgery scars. And she was there with them. And just in this joyful moment quickly whipped off her top and immediately put her hands over her tits. Her nip did not expose her nipples, but because a friend was there with their, you know, cell phone and just like a few seconds of videos of, Hey, look where we are. Just this great moment of like her between two men with the white house behind them yeah, and being like, like, oh my God, isn't this great? And they're, they're all just smiling and laughing and like having the greatest time. And that little moment is all that like went out. Mm-hmm. It's not like they were surrounded by people who were like, oh, sinner. It's nothing like that. Yeah. But it went out where people could see it. And apparently, you know assholes got an asshole and Mm. heaven forbid anyone be happy or joyful or feel like they're free to do what they feel like doing. And there's a couple, and, and I gotta say, I didn't, I didn't know until like a day or so ago that she ended up putting out this big apology, which was very sweet and very thoughtful. And like she, I mean, she, she had to make this apology, not even to the people who were offended by it, but to Like, this idea that she was in a position of privilege and therefore her actions, because she has influence, could upset and cause violence against other people. Like, could get the wrong people riled up and those wrong people could take it out on someone else. And... So she was apologizing to other trans people who might have gotten hurt. Mm -hmm. And I'm listening to that and I'm thinking, God damn it, this world is so fucked up. I was going to say, that's the sad, sick reality that America's in right now, though. Yeah. But it's like. Yeah. It's like she's. She's not apologizing to people she's ever known or met or anything. It's like, it's like this domino effect of she, you know, the person who punched somebody 
probably never even saw... Like, they're pissed off because they're yeah. an asshole. It's yeah. like, she yeah. didn't cause that. They're mad because they have problems. Yeah. And they're mad because their reasons for being mad don't make any goddamn sense. And so that one of the things that I wanted to talk about was what exactly is the problem with her getting her titties out in front of the White House? Because here's just some random things. One, perfectly legal for a woman to be topless in Washington, D.C. Austin, Texas also happens to be a city where a woman can legally walk around topless. It doesn't mean yeah, it doesn't mean yeah. we do it all the time, <laughs> but this is a place where we can do that. DC is another place where you can do that and apparently yeah. there are fairly regular annual events where women stand in front of the White House with their titties out because they can. Because it's mm. fucking America. And if you can, you're going to do it. Kind of like the way those guys who have open carry, like in places where you have open carry laws. Oh, and those assholes. Those, those assholes will, will get their biggest fucking gun and just walk around with it because they can. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, if, if I have to put up with your big giant gun carrying ass, then some woman can take her top off and you need to keep your goddamn mouth shut. Yeah. Amen. And I don't care if your kid saw it. I don't fucking care. She didn't hurt your kid any more than I'm harmed by you walking around trying to intimidate me with your fucking gun. If yeah. you can do that, then I can whip my titties out. So next thing. Those people who are being all, oh, no, you can't do that. Let me just ask, just a, just philosophically, just so those, the people who have issues with trans people, those trans men who took their tops off, who don't, who have their titties removed, and now have, you know, their top surgery scars. Yeah, yeah. The people who don't believe... The people who don't believe that trans is a real thing would call those trans men women, right? Yeah. So... In theory, but yes. Well, the yes. people who don't believe that <laughs> yes. it's real. The people who think a trans woman is a man in a dress. Yeah. And therefore they shouldn't be allowed to go to the same bathroom that I do. And they think they're protecting me from a predator. Those people should think that those two men who took their shirts off with their non-titties are those people allowed to take their shirts off now because they cut their titties off and mm -hmm. if you think that rose montoya is a man how come it's so shouldn't she be allowed to take her shirt off if she's a man hey, yeah. because you people are the ones who say she's not a woman anyway is it because her titties are nice and it makes mm -hmm. and it, it and, and it made your dick move a little bit, and now you're feeling all funny, and so you got to take it out on somebody. So now you're gonna go punch a trans woman because your dick moved, and you're feeling you you're feeling some kind of way, and somehow it's all her fault because somebody needs to make it make sense how a woman in Washington D.C. feeling happy. And acting on her happiness caused a hate crime somewhere else. Mm -hmm. This is why people, this is why homophobes and transphobes are fucking stupid and none of their beliefs matter. It's like they just, 
we cannot we cannot bow and scrape and worry about what they're gonna do because no I was like I get that they're that they're upset and violent and whatever but there are way more of us than there are of them and as long as we stand shoulder to shoulder and refuse to bow down to them they can't hurt us if we're all in a bunch it's like you know it's it's only when we let people stand out on their own that the the individuals get hurt we have to stand together and remind them that they're the ones who are wrong because this is bullshit and I can't, it, make, it makes me so upset that this woman had to do this big apology when she didn't do anything wrong. Uh, yeah, no, she did not do anything wrong. And she did this whole like, oh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done it at the White House. It wasn't respectful. It's like, have you seen the things that have happened in the White House? The previous, the previous resident of the White House threw a plate of fast food at the wall and smeared ketchup down the wall. All you did was take your top <laughs> off did. on a beautiful summer day. You know, it's yeah. like, it's fucking fine, Rose. I love you. You're beautiful. You're wonderful. Keep doing what you're doing. You're fucking fabulous. Pitney and Amelia pr- approved. Take your top yeah. off more. Your titties are fabulous. So, I agree. Yes. And, you know, and I have, you know, my little story that I was going to share is sort of in the same vein of just what fucking assholes people are now. And you know why they're assholes now? We're not going to go into this, but I'm just going to say it. They're assholes now because of goddamn Donald Trump. And that's all I'm going to say about that. He made them think they were smart. And we have to remind them that they're stupid and they all need to shut up. Yeah, Donald Trump allowed the detriment of society to have a voice when they don't deserve a voice. And uh, history will demonize Trump for that. But anyway, so did you see the article about... I can't... No, it was in Canada. It was in Canada. Um, There was some sort... Was it... I don't know. Was it a track meet or some sort of athletic event? And this man just randomly started yelling at this nine-year-old cisgender girl... Because she has short hair. Oh. And this right. man started yelling at her about how dare you compete in this because you're a boy. Like she and looked a little butch and therefore she must be a boy. Because he was convinced because of all this media bullshit that's going on right now. He's convinced that she was trans. That she wouldn't that she, be winning if she had if she was a girl. Yes, and she shouldn't be competing because she was trans. Totally not trans. She was totally cisgendered, nine-year-old little girl who was so confused by this fucking asshole. Right. That was there yelling at a nine-year-old child. Right. For being trans. All probably because his his little snot-nosed brat was probably coming in second or third, and it's like, but my little angel deserves to win, and therefore there must be something nefarious going on if my little angel isn't winning. So oh, obviously oh. that child must be a boy. And I hope that that asshole, I hope he has a son, and I hope the son grows up to be a fabulous drag queen and just hates his father forever. Oh my that's god. That's what I hope. That's the thing that that's the thing that kills me. I see it so often like the people who say, 
Oh, isn't it interesting? I've seen comments like, isn't it interesting how it's only the fucking libtards that have that have these little fairy children or whatever? And it's like, no, it's that you people, your children are fucking lying to you. Your children wouldn't oh, yeah. dare be honest with you. That's why. And then one day your children are just going to stop speaking to you and you'll never hear from them again. And you're going to be like, what? I was such a good mother. It's like, God damn it, you know. But like there was there's there's been so many athletes who are happy to go on like Fox, you know, or or places like that or OAN yeah. and they present themselves as long as it's like a blonde girl, you know. Mm-hmm. There's this this one who she called herself um the fastest girl in Connecticut. It's like she called herself that. She yeah. was not the fastest girl in Connecticut. She didn't. She wasn't out there winning every track meet. Pl- she lost plenty of track meets to oh, both yeah, of course. to cisgender and occasionally to transgender girls. But mm-hmm. but she just kind of got it in her head that she wasn't getting enough attention. So she decided to name herself the fastest girl in Connecticut so she could get interviewed, and. Weirdly, she still got like a running scholarship to the con- to the college she wanted to go to. And the trans girl that that she would run against sometimes didn't get a track scholarship. So, what is she fucking complaining about? Yeah. yeah. So, but is she but she still has to make a big deal and point names because she wants people to go, "Ew, look at that. Look at that." freak over there thinks she has the oh, right to I know. run. I know. And it's like, it's it's just these assholes who just want to ruin other people who are just living their lives and minding their fucking business. And the, the one thing, especially when it comes to athletic stuff, it's like trans athletes, I say this all the time, trans athletes lose athletic events every day. Oh, I know. But no one cares about that. Just like everybody else. Trans athletes fail. Trans athletes lose. They come in second. They come in last. Whatever. Just like anyone else. Yep. And cis athletes occasionally have, you know, weird genetic predisposition. Like, I always use the Michael Phelps example. Michael Phelps was a genetic freak. And he beat everyone in swim meets because he was a genetic freak. And he also worked really hard, but he also was a freak of goddamn nature. Yeah, yeah. But nobody was out there going, but it's not fair. I I practice really, really hard, but I can't beat Michael Phelps, so you should take his gold medals away. No one would fucking dare! Yeah, I know, I know. And all these fucking feminists, all these people who call themselves feminists who are ultimately saying, but, but it's not fair because boys are better than girls. So we're just delicate girls and we can't compete. And that's exactly what the message is. That's what they're saying. And it's like, but it's not true because the only reason why women and men are separated in sports, because everything used to be combined because they didn't originally separate people but then every so often a woman would come along who would get pretty damn close to beating a man and all of a sudden it was oh we should separate these before before a man gets embarrassed i mean it's just it's fucking stupid even things like skeet shooting where there shouldn't be any separation to begin with it's like oh no no, put them at the opposite ends we can't have them compete against each other because heaven forbid a man feel bad but yeah, it's uh, you know. But this fucking thing, this yeah. fucking asshole, though. I don't even think it had even anything to do with who was winning and who was losing. He was just a hateful asshole. And then he who got saw embarrassed. Saw some girl with a short haircut. Oh, I'm sure she was winning. You I'm know, sure she was. it wasn't. He was just some fucking asshole. And I know he's in Canada. 
but I still say it's because of goddamn Donald Trump. Oh, Trump ruined. Uh, Trump and fucked his up Canada too. Followers. Because there were people. There's people in Canada who last year, um, there were a bunch of people in Canada who started talking about the, like their Second Amendment, you know, their their Second Amendment rights, and people were like, "Oh God, I can't even remember what the Second Amendment in Canada is," but they were like. Um, you, you mean to make Saskatchewan a blah blah blah? Like yeah. because the because the Second Amendment to Canada's Constitution is has nothing to do with guns, or you know, it's like because yeah, yeah. even people in Canada, it's like you know, I like to believe, I like to believe that Canadians are smarter than us, but there's there's dumb fuck Canadians too, which is sad. Oh yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I want I want to believe you know we have we have friends up in Canada or we have friends of the show up there yeah. and they're you know nice but they're but they're smart Canadians <laughs> and oh my god there's so much stuff that I want to bring up but I'm not even gonna bring it up because it's like you know it's too much you go into politics and the news and there's so there's things in my mind I was like well I'm gonna bring this up and it's like no it's, it's too much read this whole, it's yeah. just too much it's too much that we it's we gave we much. gave each other like well like well okay I'm gonna pick this story and I'm gonna pick this story and yeah it's like okay it's too much it's too fucking much but yeah we just live so yeah uh so yeah I never thought though that I would I was so excited this is weird to say but I remember I was so excited in the 90s with Clinton, I was like, "Oh my God!" With such liberal times, I never thought. I and would looking see... back, it's it sucked. Looking back, compared oh yeah, compared to what we got with like during Obama, the Clinton era really sucked. But at the time, yeah, it but looking so back, good. I was like, "Oh my God, this is so awesome!" <laughs> and then with Obama, and then with gay marriage, I was like, "Oh my God, I can't! This is so fabulous! I never thought I'd live to see this." Right. And now it's all going fucking backwards. Yeah. And gay marriage and I wasn't never that thought long ago. I would live to see this. Yeah. It going backwards. I had too much faith in Americans apparently. Yeah. That I don't realize that 50% of the population is fucking garbage and that, because they are. And that while we were back there 8 years ago being so happy and celebrating gay marriage and yeah. going to going to weddings and really really having so having so much goddamn fun and and just you know running around running around the city yeah. whooping it up that fifty percent of the country was going all right what do we got to do to tear this shit down and I didn't realize that and now I'm realizing half of our population is fucking garbage yeah. And that's really frightening because I thought things were getting better. Yeah. But alas, they're not. You know, they're... Which means all these young people, you know, I was there during AIDS. Yeah. I was there during ACT UP. Yeah. Well, like all the people who, you the know, people who I think went we don't rallies. need feminism. It's like your grandmother yeah, I mean, I went did, to couldn't rallies. get a credit card gotten, in her own name. Yeah. I've gotten fucking beaten up. Yeah. You know, but, and well, all these kids stupid still get beaten little up. faggots now that think, oh, everything is so great. All you little faggots now, it ain't so great. And you need to grow a pair of balls and get out there. Because it's getting worse than it was when I was out there. Yeah, it's, it's, fucking, you know. it's fucking terrifying. It's, uh, I mean, a year ago... A year ago, we did an episode called "Put on Your Fighting Heels," and uh, and even then, you know, we could smell that it was getting bad. But I don't think I thought. I don't think. I don't think I really deep down thought that that like Roe versus Wade was gone. I didn't think that I. Oh, yeah. I didn't think I was so sure that like that they were gonna that there was a chance that like interracial marriage could go away. I didn't, I, I don't know. think I, I like, thought I, I, that I'm we were on the verge of all of that. And now it's like taking away. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, I mean, we keep having these little moments, these little glimmers of hope, but that, but they're, it's not for them not trying. It's like, 
courts overturning bullshit laws and things, but it can't happen fast enough. Yeah. People are already dying. People are already killing themselves because yeah, they like, can't get their medications. I mean, there is. I, I, it's like it bothers. I feel like there is no hope. We're going back into the fifties with all these fucking Christians and these fucking MAGA Republicans. But there's hope because we do still outnumber them, and I think there's enough people who sit in the middle and just there because the world is filled with people who sit on their asses and don't do anything. Yeah. And they don't vote and they don't vote. Yeah. And we, it, it's just enough of us have to grab all of those people that we know and shake the shit out of them and be like, yeah. people are dying. This is not, this is not a goddamn joke. And we, I know yeah. we said it a year ago, but we're saying it again. You can see it. We weren't make. it's like what we said a year ago, it's fucking happening in front of your eyes. We fucking mean it. It's yeah. only going to get worse. Do it. Yeah. Register somebody to vote. Yeah. And on a happier note. Yes. Although it really bitchy. I just have to give a shout out at how fabulous it is that fucking Pat Robertson is dead. Oh my god! Yes, yes, so, yes! So yay! Pat Robertson, Pat Robertson is, is dead. dead! Fuck yeah! Ooh, ooh. <laughs> fucking burn in hell that I don't even believe in, you asshole! Oh my god! P Pat Robertson and Fred Phelps and all those assholes can just go suck Satan's dick. I'm just so oh, yeah, happy. But fucking Pat Robertson. But I just got to say, though, Pat Robertson did give me some joy in my life. By dying? Because when I was a kid, I remember watching an episode of The 700 Club. Okay, this is going to be this is gonna be good. I'm very excited. And he was talking about the three things that were... Bringing America down. <laughs> and they were pornography, promiscuity, and lasciviousness. <laughs> How old are you? Oh my God. I must have been like, I don't know, 12 or something. Oh my God. And I thought that was so funny. And years later... I was camping with some friends oh. and, you know, we were drunk and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And we had a, this bonfire and we had drums and we were drumming. <laughs> and I told this story. So we were like drunk off our asses drumming in the middle of rural Texas outside, you know, outside of Fredericksburg. Yeah. And screaming at the top of our lungs, pornography, promiscuity, lasciviousness. <laughs> oh my God. Pornography. So Pat Robertson did bring a little bit of joy to my life. <laughs> pornography, promiscuity, lasciviousness. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> I think I think we need some new merch, don't you? Oh my god. Yeah, the the, the line of lasciviousness. Yes. <laughs> Jumping in to say that we opened a brand new merch store at T Public just to launch this new line of lasciviousness. Apparently, Zazzle has become too tasteful for the likes of us, because they wouldn't allow it. So, we'll soon be moving the rest of our merch to the new store. Link is in the show notes. Everyone listening, put, <laughs> put your right hand up right now. No, jazz hands. Put your jazz hands up right now. And vow that you will purchase lasciviousness merch. Woo! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, should we do it once more? Let's see. Pornography! Promiscuity! 
Lasciviousness! <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you enjoy our show, please take a moment to rate and review us wherever you listen. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone, Everyone loves stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I'm sure my neighbors are wondering, because, you know, I have the neighbors, like, that are working in their oh, yard. Oh, my husband is right downstairs. I'm sure he's down there going. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure that he's like, "Oh my God, what is what is he doing?" I probably just there? woke up the dog. <laughs> I'm sure I woke up the dog. <laughs> anyway. <laughs>